our Songkran special. Well, only do this once a year, don't we? And it is Songkran today, the official Thai New Year. Uh, of course, in some parts of Thailand, around Silom, uh, some of the soys, um, certainly in Pattaya, I know there has been people getting a, an early start over the past couple of days, but today is the Thai New Year. So it's the day where in towns right around the country, there is gonna be some water splashing. Now, out here, just in front of me, uh, they're getting ready. They've got a couple of great big barrels, like big plastic barrels, and I'm sure they're gonna be filled with uh, cold, icy water, and they're gonna have a, a, a few sprinkles of that, um, that hot talcum powder. I can't remember the name of it now. But uh, Sawadi Pi Mai, happy Thai New Year. Uh, the Thai people get to celebrate three New Years. They have the, uh, the Western New Year on January the 1st. They have the Chinese New Year, which is well celebrated here in Thailand, uh, or some people call it the Lunar New Year. And then they have the Thai New Year. So the Thai New Year is sort of timed to welcome the, uh, the rains for the year. It's officially Oh my God, I'll show you this uh, shirt when the man walks in. I'm sure he'll be coming in. Uh, it's the start of the wet season, officially. So this is the time where, of course, they celebrate, in a, basically in agrarian culture, uh, the important start of the rains after, in so many parts, uh, four very dry months, uh, which also get called the hot season. So we're now in that transition from the hot season into the, uh, the dry season into the wet season and that should be starting down this part of the world at least sometime uh, at the end of this month uh, i'll try and get him to come in you've got to see this outfit oh my god hope it doesn't fade with water anyway um the w prickly heat powder that's it yeah so when you get the icy uh, water thrown on you then this prickly powder and a uh, non-cup non-cup come here when it's, look at this look at this Look at you! The whole outfit! Soay! Soay! Thank you! Lo Mark, Lo Mark! Wow! He outdoes me! Uh, I got this shirt the other day. I wore it on yesterday's program, I know. And then, of course, I, um, I, I wore it for a recording of Grumpy Old Men and I'm wearing it today. So I'm getting my 150 baht value out of this outfit. And uh, I've also got the, uh, the lay that they gave me at uh, the Aquella Golf Course yesterday. Uh, it looks beautiful, but it, it's plastic. So happy Songkran to everybody. I do ho hope you have a good day. Now we do have actually a very serious topic to talk about today, and I don't want this to get out of hand. Uh, and I will address um, some of the, uh, the, the comments that have come in already uh, as soon as we can. But there has been a couple of headlines now just because I'm so stupid, uh, I forgot to bring the, uh, the connection from my iPad to the computer. So I've marked up uh, all these stories, but I can't show you them because, uh, well, they're on the iPad and I've left the lead at home. But this was a story in T Time magazine. I'm not sure if you can see that, uh, but it says Thailand tourist town deals with their own Russian invasion. Now, the, the invasion headline was also used in a Phuket-Go headline this week, talking about the same issue. But it, obviously in the last 18 months, there's been a lot of Russian people either visiting Phuket or in many cases becoming new expats and, uh, and staying there. So I'm gonna go through uh, some of the main points of that article. And uh, I would be interested to know in what people think about this. Now, a lot of people in Phuket uh, do think that the huge number of uh, Russian tourists to the island, by far more than any other nationality, uh, has been a huge economic boon to the island after, of course, two years of no tourists. And Phuket, probably more than any other location in Thailand, it's either tourists or there's no tourists and you, you're really suffering. It probably accounts for 90, 95% of the economy down there. So the island province really relies on tourists. So opening it up to direct flights from Russia uh, back in uh, December and January last year, 2022-23, uh, 
It was seen by many to be a huge economic advantage and there has been an enormous influx of money. I mean, the amount of condos being bought, the amount of condos and new villas being built, uh, it, there's a lot of activity on the island. Now, some people see that as some dogs having a bit of a songkran biffo at the moment. Talk about my dog in a moment too. Uh, a lot of people see there have been a huge amount of disadvantages as well, and the article does go through some of these. So hopefully you can hear me okay. I've got a, uh, a double mic on today, so I've done my best to try and alleviate any comments about the volume or the quality of the sound. So let's uh, just have a quick hello to everybody. And it is great to have you all with us on this Songkran day. Going to be a very hot day as I look out towards the Andaman Sea, which is only um, some uh, 50 metres away from me. It is flat, calm, not a breath of air. And uh, I, I think there will be some easterly winds later in the day, but they'll basically just be bringing all the hot air from the land over to the coastline. Usually, uh, Sometimes we sort of get a sea breeze kicking in and it blows the easterly winds away and it's quite refreshing. But I don't think uh, that's going to be the case. But it's going to be stinking hot, probably 35, 36, high humidity. And the best thing that might happen today is getting a bucket of cold water, icy cold water thrown on you to, uh, to cool you down a bit. So uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, John Williams, suggestion. Hi Tim, probably for grumpy old men. How about you and Steve discussing the racist F word that Steve likes to use? I think you're talking about Farang. When talking about us Westerners would be interesting. Uh, look, I think Steve and I have had that conversation before. We've actually got a bit of a different attitude towards it. It, it doesn't really trigger me. I hear it all the time, of course, but I don't particularly like it. Sort of, uh, you know, white Caucasian Westerner if you want a, some sort of translation. So the Chinese and the South Koreans and the Japanese, they're not usually called Farang or the Malaysians or the, uh, the, the local Burmese or uh, the Cambodians. It's just the white sort of European uh, Caucasians that get that term Farang. So just spinning it around, I mean, if we were to, in our home countries, refer to brown Asian people, I think that would be seen as racist. So certainly from my perspective, I sort of see it as a, a, a sort of a racist term, but not necessarily intended in a negative way. But I've heard the term used in a negative connotation as well as usually just a, a, a sort of a, a name just to try and describe somebody. I prefer to be called by my name, Tim, or described as an Australian. Uh, but, but beyond that, uh, I think it sort of gets a little bit, mm. and, and I might be putting my own uh, sort of modern sensibilities on a word that's not meant to be used that way. And a lot of people have got their own attitudes, but uh, John, I, I do sort of see it perhaps as a racist term, but not necessarily in a sort of a negative way. But uh, yeah, Steve, he, he doesn't have any problems with the word at all, nor do many people. But that's just my feeling about it. Hopefully I've answered your question. I'm sure many people are gonna be talking about that as we go through. Scott D, hello to you. Hello from Chicago. Beautiful spring uh, weather this past week. Uh, yes, coming out of winter, of course, and it's uh, a nice time of the year. As I said, we will be moving sometime, probably later this month, into the wet season. And that means that we will probably get some rain at some stage each day. Some days, like you can get weeks, which will be dry and clear, but uh, and then you might get, oh, very rarely, maybe one or two days where it just doesn't stop raining, but that's pretty rare. Uh, so the wet season is a nice time of the year. The temperature's down a bit. It doesn't get sort of roasting hot like it does, does this time of the year. And I can usually get through uh, sleeping every night without any air conditioning. The air conditioning has been getting a bit of a pull through the last couple of weeks. Where did you get your new pet dog? Was it a soy dog? Asks Luke. Yeah, absolute 100% soy dog, a puppy. Uh, we have found out, because we've been to the VET, that uh, I spell VET because my last dog, it's called Molly, 
Molly used to know when we were going to the veterinarian and we couldn't use the word vet or veterinarian because uh, she would know what's going on and be gone, hiding uh, up under a bed somewhere. So uh, yeah, we always called the VET. But uh, she, she, beautiful little dog, she's about three months old. Uh, she will be spayed when she gets to about five months. Uh, she's been dewormed, she's had a couple of vaccinations. She uh, just really walked through the gate, just sitting there on the couch, jumped up on the couch and said, hi, I'm your new dog, I've moved in. And it was pretty much as simple as that. So it was uh, one of those little bits of serendipity probably going to end up good for uh, the dog and good for me. Mind you, the two cats are not quite so sure about it. I didn't have a chance to discuss and get them ready for it. It just happened. But um, yeah, they're sort of coming around and starting to tolerate this very active young pup who's, um, here's Mr. Steve Ross just riding past on his bicycle. We'll see Steve on Grumpy Old Men tomorrow. So um, yeah, that's Daisy, Daisy the soy dog. And a lot of people saying, oh, she's some sort of Belgian, this or whatever. No, just a common old garden soy dog. But uh, I think uh, Daisy's made a pretty good stock and uh, would have had to have survived out on the beach here. I think the soy dogs get a pretty good life here. The locals look after them. But Daisy's gonna get a bit of extra special care and some cuddles and I'm sure along with the cats, she's going to be ending up sleeping on the bed. Anyway, we'll work that one out when we get there. Uh, let's be honest, ties hold Western white farangs on a pedestal compared to anyone else, says Martin. Um, not so sure about that these days. I, I think that days of, um, oh, who's that uh, exotic sort of white person? I think that's a little bit of a colonial um, sort of overthrow. What, what, maybe 20 years ago, but these days I think, uh, especially down this part of the world, they're so used to seeing uh, white Caucasian foreigners, they don't really think uh, too much about it these days. Uh, same goes for other Asian countries. Uh, cruising the Thaiway says, uh, racist behavior comes from ignorance, lack of education comes from an absence of etiquette. Parents have a responsibility to teach children etiquette. That is not part of the culture, unfortunately. Okay, thank you, Cruising the Thaiway. Um, okay, what else have we got here? Heathrow says, I suppose one benefit would be more money bouncing around the Thai economy. So this is uh, in reference to the, uh, the number of Russian people that have come here over the past 18 months. Remembering that uh, after the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, a Russian army, um, many uh, countries just closed their borders to Russian citizens but not here in Thailand, they allowed them to come. Not only allowed them to come uh, on a 30-day visa exemption, but they extended the 30-day visa extension to 90 days. No other countries, just people from, uh, from Russia. So I think a lot of people uh, weren't particularly happy about that. And they said, well, what about us? Um, so yeah, that, that's caused a bit of tension, I think, as well. Um, okay, cruising the highway, talking about Farang says, it's just a word, don't overthink it. I use it all the time. Censorship of any word is never a good thing. Well, I think some words need to be censored, obviously. Uh, freedom of speech must be, pre be protected. Censorship that Facebook does is a crime. Uh, cruising the highway, I have to disagree with you. I think there is a responsibility once you start uh, airing your points of view and some words hurt. Some words should be banned. Uh, some words need context. And it's up to all of us to try and be civil in our discourse. And freedom of speech is uh, only tolerated as far as people are using it and not abusing it. And unfortunately, these days, a lot of people abuse uh, freedom of speech. There's no such thing as a total freedom of speech. Otherwise, we would have complete anarchy. Just my feelings, but thank you for your comment. Val says, greetings from Sunbury, Sunbury uh, northwest of Melbourne in Victoria, Australia. Enjoy Song Kran. I hope they don't throw ice water that is hard to take even with the ambient temperatures in the 40s. I have to say, 
I am mentally prepared for somebody driving past on a motorbike and going heave ho with a bucket of water through the window. So I've, I'm already twitchy to close the window if I need to, because I'm not going to be buying another laptop. I can tell you, if, if I get a bucket of water over this laptop, no more TNT, I'm finished. Uh, morning, says Tony Fossey from Jom Tien up in uh, sort of southern Pattaya. And happy Thai New Year, everyone. Have a great Songkran. Robbie says good morning from a grey old Melbourne autumn. It's well underway and starting to get cooler, of course, in the southern hemisphere. They're now heading into winter. And it was the 2011 winter, which was the last uh, stroke for me. It was just bitter and cold and drizzly, and I thought, I'm never going to do another Melbourne winter again. And I haven't. It was a good move for me. Good evening, morning, Tim, says Richard Boyne. A horrible weather here. Uh, that's a Canadian flag in Canada. Looking forward to seeing uh, your weather on video. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, because if, oh, gee, if I turn it around, it's going to, I don't know if it's going to behave itself. Is it going to, no, it's not, no. Meant to auto white balance, uh, light balance, and everything, but it, it doesn't seem to work that way. So anyway, there you go. Uh, smoke from seven orifices. Or, smoke from seven orifices. Question: What happened to Tim's Russian real estate pal? Oh, um, Ivan Ivan Melnikov. I think he's still doing uh, real estate. I have to say, anybody doing real estate, uh, specialising in Russian uh, buyers have been making a lot of money. The, the prices in Phuket have doubled in some cases, tripled in some areas. I mean, coming off a low base after COVID, of course, but uh, so many Russian people and Chinese buying a lot of property, especially in Phuket. Uh, we will talk a bit more about that when we get to this article, which I can't show you, but I can read to you. Uh, I haven't spoken to Ivan for the past six months, but I think he's still in Phuket and uh, I think he's just very busy. But it'd be interesting to get him on the program. Good reminder, I'll, I'll contact him, see if I can get him up here. Uh, good afternoon from a cloudy Melbourne, says David Clark. Hi David, and best wishes to your family. Uh, Sawadi Krupp from Melbourne, Australia. John D, a lot of people in Melbourne. And uh, Ken RQ says, uh, and he's in Hua Hin. Uh, LOL, Tim found a shirt buddy, <laughs> KJ. Yeah, what a shirt. And some interesting shirts walking through the door today. Uh, people, um, no, you didn't try, mate. Just putting on a singlet, you try better. Uh, so just moving on to some more comments. Mr. Ben's World, happy Songkran. I'm in Concan for the holiday. It's a big change from life on the Panga plantation. I'm sure it is. Uh, Facebook is the playground of scammers too. Yeah, I mean, going to any of these social media platforms, you need to have your uh, wits about you. Not everybody is on Facebook to, uh, to read all your posts and look at your photos. Some of them are there to make money, either legally or illegally. So yeah, you do need to just be careful. Don't forget to hit that uh, thumbs up. Friend says canine companion. Trevor Cunningham says, and these are all unsolicited, I haven't pre-read any of these, 13 degrees and grey here in Christchurch. Christchurch in uh, the southern island of New Zealand. Uh, Trevor, counting down the days until my New Zealand winter escape to Lokbri. Happy Songkran everyone, says MK and Carl. All these young Russian men and their families run to Thailand to avoid the threat of being drafted into the Russian army. Carl, you're wrong. Some of the people coming to Thailand are avoiding the conscription. Many are just thinking, we've had enough of this. We can see conflict. We don't want any part of this. We want a better future for our family. Now, if you were of conscription age and you didn't want to have somebody perhaps potentially shooting at you and getting killed, uh, you'd probably think, I don't want to be in this country anymore either. I'd probably be one of them. Uh, if I didn't agree with the reasons for, uh, for invading Ukraine, I'd have every reason to get out of that country and avoid being drafted into a war that I didn't want to be involved in. 
So don't criticise these people for escaping uh, the, the, the situation. And Thailand has opened its doors. They're just walking through the doors. So in most cases, the vast majority, people are just looking for a better life. Heh, compare this, the sunshine and the palm trees, to uh, life in Russia at the moment. It would be pretty rough uh, in, in many cases. So I disagree with you. Not all the people are you know, running away. They're not cowards. Uh, but you know, avoiding being shot at is probably a good idea. And as I said, I'd be doing the same. Alpha Bravo says, question, isn't there a competition? Which Asian country has the best visa offers? If there's only one for all, is it good that there'd be no more competition? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, of course, all these 14 Asian countries are all sovereign countries and they've all got their own visa laws and regulations. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure if there's much of a competition. Certainly, uh, all the countries tend to update them and change them from time to time. On balance, Thailand has got pretty good immigration opportunities for people who want to stay here for a short time or a long time. Some people think, oh, well, you know, I've got to put money in the bank. I don't have enough money. Well, you know, you're not making the laws. Uh, Thailand's making the laws. And if you don't fit in, there are probably other things you could do to circumvent. Uh, that's a very Thai thing as well. But uh, generally, the, the Thai immigration laws are here to protect Thailand, not to assist you. Uh, how many days will Songkran festivities last, says uh, Ozhan Maker, making sure there's nothing strange there. Um, it depends where you are. I think here in Time Mulang it'll be one day and then it's over. And that would be the case in a lot of other villages. But if you go to Pattaya, if you go to parts of Bangkok, uh, maybe around Bangla Road, it'll go for two, three, maybe four days, uh, maybe longer. Uh, what's that? Khao San Road, I'm sure it'll be it would have started a few days earlier and it will be going for a few days more. But uh, it depends where you are in the country. The Thai government said they're going to have 21 days of celebrations, which confused a lot of people, thinking that would be water splashing and water fights for 21 days. They're just having uh, commemorations and celebrations of the, the true purpose of Songkran to uh, celebrate UNESCO listing Songkran as a cultural phenomenon or something. Paulo Gator says, Happy Songkran, I'm in Chiang Mai and Songkran is great here. Yes, always a big popular festival up in Chiang Mai. Best wishes to you. Uh, Juju, lots of young people from all over the world here, except I've noticed 50 to 60% of the classes I attend is Russians for the past two sessions. Yeah, look, I mean, there are plenty of Russian people here at the moment. Uh, and look, we will get to the article. I'll get back to more of your comments later. But to this article, and I'm sorry I can't bring it up on the computer because uh, I didn't bring the correct lead. A good morning to you if you just joined us, by the way. Uh, 9.22 is the time here in Taimlan in Panga, and I'm sitting 50 metres away from the Andaman Sea, which is still flat calm. In fact, uh, I can't see where the sea ends and the sky begins, such as uh, it's just a pale blue, uh, complete blowout. I can't see where the horizon is today. That's not because I've, I've got excellent eyesight, but it's just absolutely no wind at all. Now, the, uh, the article I saw the other day, they've already been splashed, driving past in a brand new BYD seal and a whole lot of yellow goo and paint on it. Hope it washes off. The article was from Time magazine and it was headlined Thailand's tourist towns deal with their own Russian invasion. And of course that invasion word is very dramatic and designed to be so I suppose in a headline. A Thailand, the, in Thailand, the two year old conflict is having a profound social effect despite being over 4,000 miles away while many Western nation, nations have shut out Russian air travel in response to Vladimir Putin's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Thailand sees Russian arrivals as key to reviving its pandemic-ravaged 
tourism industry. And the Prime Minister last October, Seta Tawisin, extended the 90-day visas on arrival for Russian passports, saying uh, that we are not part of the Ukraine conflict, we are neutral. So Thailand saying they're neutral on the situation, and you can debate whether you think that's a good or a bad thing, but because of that, they won't stop Russian or Ukrainian people from traveling to Thailand. So, they have. Last July, the Russian Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov, visited Phuket to inaugurate a new consulate to cope with the surging visitor numbers. And let me tell you, it has been a surge indeed. And a very elaborate uh, consulate set up in the Royal Phuket Marina. I've uh, been there once myself. And uh, it also says that lurid headlines have appeared. Headlines like this. Rabid Russian assaults police team in Phuket after going berserk at a city centre hotel. And Russian tourist kicks pregnant Thai woman after being la asked to leave shoes outside. And we know that story from Pangan. But of course, there's also been... Dogs are having a good song, Kran. <coughs> What are they barking at? What's going on? You tell them. Somebody's turned up. I think carrying a water gun is not going to be something that uh, the soy dogs are going to ignore. Oh, I see. The man's walking a beautiful white, like a Malamute type dog, and the soy dogs aren't particularly happy about that. I've never seen a whiter dog in my life. So remember, there's also been stories about New Zealanders behaving badly, uh, Swiss people behaving <coughs> badly, Portuguese, Australians. But at the moment, there seems to be this uh, concentration that any time the word Russia is in the headline, people go, oh my God, it's the Russians taking over Phuket and causing all the crime. That's not the case. <coughs> in fact, statistically, somebody did the numbers. I quoted the numbers, but somebody got their calculator, calculator out and worked out that um, of the people, the Russian people, arrested... No, no, we're talking about total foreigners. The total number of foreigners, many of them admittedly Russian, that have been arrested or deported, some of them for things like uh, even uh, not having a work permit, so not serious crimes, but crimes nonetheless, or overstaying their visa, when it was worked out, it was 0.001% of all the foreigners that had arrived. So we're talking about a very small portion of the number of people coming here who are causing trouble. It's a very small proportion. And the uh, Lieutenant Colonel, the Chief Inspector at the Phuket Tourist Police, said Russia and Thailand are so different and sometimes they don't understand Thai law and culture. Sometimes they break the law and they don't recognise we have law enforcement. Surprise, surprise, there's law enforcement in Thailand. And uh, of course, acknowledging that the Kremlin has ramped up both the military conscription uh, amid mounting casualties. So if you are a young Russian male, you might be looking for opportunities to get out of the country. And I fully understand and appreciate that. Um, Mark, a Russian who fled to Thailand with his boyfriend, is quoted in this Time article saying, that was the final straw for us. We understood we can't go back because anyone can be called to the army and just die in the war. And as a result, the number of Russians choosing to stay in Thailand long term is soaring. Now, I spoke to somebody who sells um, the Thailand elite visa and they say uh, at the moment it is by far more Russian people than any other nationality <coughs> applying for those Thailand elite visas. They'll allow you to stay here for five years, 10 years or 20 years, uh, often with a family and you pay for the pleasure. It's quite a lot of money. I think the five year visa now is 1,400, sorry, 1,400,000 baht. Uh, I think it's two million for a 10-year Thailand elite visa, but uh, it does uh, mean that your 90-day reports are done for you. You still have to technically do a 90-day report, but they're done for you. You've got your own lane at immigration. Uh, there's other advantages, but the fact that you can stay here 
uh, your visa is a Thailand elite visa and it allows you to stay for five, 10 or 20 years. And a lot of people with a lot of money uh, buying those visas. And the article also says, the affluent are acquiring luxury cars and yachts and renting or purchasing villas. Uh, as I said, last year, the, uh, the most numerous nationality buying property in Phuket were citizens from Russia. Now, uh, th that has pushed up the rental prices too. A lot of people renting. Some rental prices have gone up 200, 300, even 400% just in the last two years. I had uh, friends, for example, who had um, a admittedly COVID priced rental in a nice condo and they were paying, I think it was 8,000 baht a month. Now, before COVID, the, the cost was around about 12,000 baht a month. But they were told at the end of their lease, I'm sorry, we're cancelling that lease because they're now getting 50 and 60,000 baht per month for that same condo. So an enormous property inflation in Phuket. Good luck to those people that own the properties. But it is a really sort of an artificial inflation, given that uh, most of this surge of Russian people has largely been uh, uh, brought, brought upon us by the fact that there's a geopolitical situation. It's not just a, a natural situation. It's like an artificial inflation of property prices and uh, new people coming through the turnstiles at immigration. Uh, another article, and this was published in Phuket-go.com, and uh, their headline is Phuket's Russian Invasion, They're Here to Stay. I think this is the other question to ask is what happens uh, when maybe the war and the conflict between Russia and Ukraine finishes? Well, let's hope it does soon. But uh, I'm not going to get into how that's going to resolve, but let's hope it does resolve soon. Will some of these Russian people go back? I'm sure some of them will, but I've got a funny feeling that a lot of them are here to stay. And along with that, again, speaking mostly about Phuket, they will just blend in with the rest of the expat community, which has been a, a very busy and thriving community ever since I was there. I was always asked to different expat parties and clubs and organizations and there's Rotary and Lions Clubs and all the expats from all different nationalities, it's really the United Nations down there, uh, get together and the, the, the Russian people will join in those activities and they'll just become part of that vibrant uh, expat community in Phuket. Uh, I know <laughs> I, I, probably about a year ago I was in Tesco shopping probably buying cat food and there were people buying uh, Russian people buying frying pans and mattresses and I'm thinking they're here to stay all the international schools uh, I've spoken to some of the, the the people running those schools they've just been inundated with applications from Russian families and their kids now studying in those international schools now many of them have zero English skills zero Thai skills and um, in some cases, they are causing a few frictions in those schools where uh, it's a bit harder for them to assimilate into the school life because of their, uh, their language skills. But I suppose, being young, they'll pick up a bit of Thai and a bit of English pretty quickly. But all these are unintended consequences. So apart from all the money flowing into Phuket, uh, there are some tensions. And if you had any high number of one nationality going to any enclave in Thailand. It might be Pattaya, it might be Hua Hin, it might be Chiang Mai, it might be a, a, a part of Bangkok. There are going to be tensions, but usually these sort of resolve. I'm very happy to say of all the things I've been reporting over the past couple of years on this particular story, uh, conflicts between Ukrainian and Russian people either visiting Phuket or moving to Phuket have been, well, I don't think I've, I think there might've been one report in the very early days, but otherwise I've heard of very, very few conflicts. So that's good to think that these people coming to Thailand, either visiting or here to move, are doing so and not bringing their conflicts from overseas to this beautiful country. 
So uh, I suppose that might be about all I've got to say. Oh, well, just, just one more. Um, this is a paragraph from the Phuket Dash Go article on the same issue. Many of these nouveau tourists, these new tourists, are moneyed, allowing them in some cases to circumvent some of the paperwork required by others, aided by corrupt lawyers, officials and agents who smooth over visa and business applications. So a lot of Russian people being caught with uh, dodgy visas, uh, not having work permits, uh, these Thai nominee companies with uh, ties putting their name in so they can open bank accounts. But there are Thai lawyers and Thai uh, aid, uh, visa agents and Thai officials who are either just turning a blind eye or actively involved with providing these dodgy documents. So it's not all the, the Russians or the Chinese fault for getting these. They are coming from uh, a lot of Thai people who uh, are acting in a corrupt manner, obviously for a return of some remuneration. So uh, let's move on to your comments on this story. As I said, both those articles using the word invasion in their headline, but uh, what do you think about this Russian invasion? And I, I, I do think it's uh, perhaps a, a poor word to use in a headline, but there has certainly been a large number of Russian people over the past 18 months moving to Thailand uh, as tourists or as now expats. Uh, are you noticing this trend in other parts of Thailand as well? Interested to hear your thoughts. And thank you very much to Derek uh, for your super chat. Can I buy you a coffee? Thank you very much. I'll do just that. Uh, Americano. Thank you. Hope she doesn't pour it over me. It would be unpleasant. So yes, I'm going to buy a coffee. Uh, okay, let's go back and see if we can see some comments. And Werner B says, the tragedy about Russian tourists is that the privileged Russians come for a holiday where the less privileged are getting killed at the Ukrainian border at the same time. Yeah, the tragedy of war. I think that's usually the case. Thanks, Werner, for that comment. Travelodium Travel Magazine, David, says, met a Ukrainian girl who was a nurse, was making more money witnessing, uh, waitressing in Sihanoukville than in Ukraine. The answer to the question is no. Thank you very much, Travelodium Travel Magazine. David, Seanookville, of course, the, uh, the seaside town in um, uh, Cambodia, which has been taken over in large measure by Chinese casinos, of all things. Pretty much ruined the town. I was lucky to see it about 20 years ago. Um, <coughs> Thug life, from my personal experience traveling to Thailand for the past 20 years, the most likely to cause trouble are Englishmen. Well, thug life, I'm not sure where you come from, but if you have a lot of British people in one particular area, the headlines are probably gonna say occasionally something about some British person behaving badly because there's more of them than anyone else. And it's the same situation for the Russians at the moment. They're getting a lot of bad headlines because there's just more of them than anyone else at the moment. Ian Roberts, they don't need to be committing a crime to cause problems here. Not quite sure what you meant there. Ian, you might have to uh, explain a bit more. Business is booming in Thailand, says Big Tony. And that's the, uh, the other result. Of course, all this money is now circulating in the Thai economy. Uh, tourism numbers, well, for the first three months this year, we're starting to get back to very close what they were back in 2019. <coughs> Excuse me. I think that's going to slow down a bit over the next few months, but certainly the first three months of this year, tourism was booming again here in Thailand. The number's very close to what they were back in 2019. Um, G. Riggs says, Martin, there are nicknames for everyone. Doesn't mean it's polite. Alpha Bravo, danger on higher tax on cars made in Thailand that, that get exported. On higher tax on cars made in Thailand. That, okay, so you're saying that they're going to be charging more tax for exported cars? I don't know, I haven't read about that. Um, Okay, so we'll get into that. Phuket is the new Hawaii, 
says Big Tony. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure about the history of Hawaii and the sort of invasion of, uh, well, people other than the native Hawaiians. Uh, when did it happen and what problems did that cause? I'm sure there were some. Um, oh, here comes my Americano. Served, look at you, in that shirt. Once again, come and show us your shirt, come on. Look at this shirt. So what do you mean? Okay. Wow. What a shirt. Looks fabulous, doesn't it? Um, direct flights. They like the warm weather, says G Rig. Yeah, look, uh, if you're talking about the Russians, there are numerous direct flights straight into Phuket and uh, Sawanapum Airport. And uh, they're direct flights from, uh, yeah, about five different Russian cities, uh, both uh, uh, Moscow and then some in the eastern side of the country as well. Now, Russia is a very, very, very large country. Uh, Happy Songkran, Tim says, adventures foreign and domestic. Uh, niet, niet, Soviet, I still still act like peasants. See, Jeff, uh, that's a completely unhelpful comment. It's not true. You're just talking about a few isolated run-ins you may have had, and then mapping that across uh, everybody that's coming to this country. Now, in my own case, uh, I've had three, well, fairly close interactions with Russian people over the past couple of months. Uh, there have been guests in my, uh, my beach houses. Now, in that case, in all those cases, they were delightful people. Uh, it was helpful that in some cases they spoke enough English so we could communicate, not have sort of long extended conversations. But they were families and they loved the beach and they'd go and visit the beach and they'd eat in the Thai restaurants. They were, for all intents and purposes, delightful people and I was very happy to have them staying uh, in my beach houses. That's a silly comment uh, from, who was it? Um, someone talking about peasants. Um, okay, I've never met a tourist in Thailand that I didn't like and get on with, says More Hertz. From whatever nationality, Russian, Italian, French, German, English, everyone I've met has been great. Yeah, look, generally I've had perfectly pleasant interactions with tourists and expats from around the world. In fact, if I was going to sort of say what's been the highlight of your 13 years in Thailand, I would say that I've had the opportunity to run into so many wonderful people from all different corners of the world. I've noted there's been a few tensions when there's been a large number of any one nationality moving into a particular area, and not all from Russia. But uh, generally, I've had some really good interactions and it's been a highlight for me. It is literally like the United Nations. Derek, this is uh, from you, thank you very much. Having an Americano, which is very hot. Okay, let's go to some more comments and questions. Uh, Smoke from Seven Orifice says, No, Scott D today. Yeah, Scott was on earlier. I'm not sure if he's still on, but Scott's around. Don't you worry about that. I think Scott might be coming out to Thailand in July. Tell us if that's right, Scott. And if you do, of course, we hope to see you. Comment from Wilco. The new price of the Thailand Elite Visa for five years is 900,000 baht. It was 600,000 baht until late last year. Are you sure about that? Um, just double check that for me, Wilco. I know it went up. I thought it was up to like 1,005. Maybe that's the 10 year visa. I get them all confused. But according to Wilco, the Thailand Elite for five years went up from 600,000 to 900,000 baht. So we're just going to check on that. Uh, thanks, Wilco. Uh, appreciate you, your correction. Stephen Rafferty. Tim, Thailand needs to be strong. Any country at war equals no citizens in or out. Well, how can you blame the average Russian person for what their lunatic leader wants to do? Uh, I'm pretty sure that the majority of Russians would not have supported the invasion of, uh, of another country. Uh, so I, I, I disagree with that. I think it's the same with um, you know, people coming from China. Uh, don't in, uh, blame the average 1.3 billion Chinese hard-working person 
on coming to have a holiday in a place like Thailand just because of uh, the actions of the Chinese Communist Party. I mean, let's face it, they didn't even vote for them. So I think it's hard to, to use that sort of rhetoric. Happy Songkran from 35 Degrees, Hua Hin, that's from Gana Hopstead. Um, okay, what else we got here? John Green, name calling depends on how you listen. The other day, Tim talked about the American dollar against the Thai baht. He said fluctuations, or was it? Okay. <laughs> Not gonna read that, but thank you very much. It was a joke, okay, I, I get it, but I probably shouldn't read it out. Scott D is indeed in the house and a very, very kind, well, wasn't intended to do that, but uh, thank you very much, Scott D, for your ongoing support. Thailand bound in July. Thank you very much, Scott, for your support. And uh, we do look forward to seeing your whole family again. Are you coming down to Phuket, down to Bang A? We hope uh, we get to see you anyway. I'll be back in Thailand when the hot, hot season is over. This is from uh, Jim Pearshall. Yeah, look, over the last month, I'll admit, it's just been breathtakingly hot. From about 11 in the morning to about 3 in the afternoon, uh, yeah, I've been sort of going to places like Amazon Cafe and doing some work in their, uh, their air conditioning. Uh, I don't have air conditioning inside my, my house. It's pretty sort of open plan and it's got open ventilation, which is good most of the year. But uh, this time of the year, it can get pretty uncomfortable. Or I sort of go into the bedroom where there is air conditioning and turn it on and, uh, well, usually start working and then <coughs> drifting off to sleep. Uh, Barbara, Barbara Botanica, the only thing that bothers me is that some very attractive young Russian women show up almost half naked in the supermarket or at immigration. Yeah, look, again, these sort of uh, are cultural differences and I've noticed that, uh, well, not necessarily Russian people, but there was a time when I first came here where European people generally would come to Thailand, to the southern beaches, and, well, take their tops off because they used to, in Europe, uh, bathing topless. But, yeah, the Thais weren't quite so keen on that. But, um, yeah, look, I think a lot of young Russian women do dress in a fairly skimpy fashion. I think uh, five minutes on the internet might tell them that's not really a good idea. Certainly if you're going to a Thai uh, office, like you're going to immigration or the labour office or going to the Department of um, uh, Land Transport, like to go for a licence or get your registration updated, uh, you put on a shirt, uh, cover your shoulders and uh, you wear something a little bit better than a skimpy hot pants. Uh, you don't wear your beach gear to those Thai offices. And if you get in trouble and you sort of get hauled into the police station, or if you have to go back and do one of those uh, apologies, dress appropriately if you're going to do so. Don't wear a dirty old t-shirt and shorts. Put on some long pants, a decent pair of shoes, and a collared shirt. Uh, you are in Thailand at the end of the day, and these little things do make a lot of difference. Might not make any difference to you, but to Thai people, they like to see people dressed appropriately at appropriate times. That doesn't include Bangalore Road or Walking Street at 3 a.m. in the morning. Uh, okay, I just missed that comment. Just scrolling back a little bit. Uh, Corrie Jackson. Hi, Corrie. Nice to see you again. We've always had a great time in Phuket. and we, We've met people from all over the world and had really good interactions. Yep, look, largely that is... Uh, the way I've seen it as well. Getting very bright here, isn't it? Uh, sorry, I can't really turn the, uh, the light down. Adventures, foreign and domestic. I lived in Thailand from 2019 to 2021, and I missed out on Songkran. Well, that of course was during part of the COVID pandemic. I'll be visiting Thailand this June, but I hope to return in April 2025 to experience Songkran for myself. Um, and Shelley, ha ha Shelley Hale saying he's right about the elite visa. They raised all the prices, but everything has gone up, hasn't it? Uh, well, yeah, look, the Thailand elite was uh, the price as it was for many, many years. It was due uh, for a bit of an increase. A lot of people complained about the increase, but uh, 
the people running the program did warn people if you didn't um, apply for a Thailand lead at that price it was going up I think last October there was plenty of information about the prices going up before so when the prices went up I think people should just go well okay the price has gone up I can either afford it or I can't there was plenty of pre-warning whether you think the Thailand elite is good value or not doesn't really matter for the people that buy them obviously it's seen as good value for them okay um, full of comments today just give me a moment to catch my breath just waiting for somebody to drive I've seen no one with a bucket of water or a water pistol yet I think it's going to kick up in the afternoon somehow I should mention I had some Chinese uh, customers arrive last night Two families, a uh, husband and wife, and then a husband and wife, and their, I think, around about 10 year old son. And they came up from uh, Phuket Airport and they arrived about 9 30. And uh, I said, Oh, here's the other uh, password, and here, here's the light switches. There are a few conversations on Google Translate. Lovely people. And um, yeah, they'll have a lovely time here. But I was thinking, I wonder if they know about Songkran. They're going to go out. One of them wants to hire a motorcycle, which is fine. But I'm thinking, they're going to drive around today and wonder why is everybody wearing these floral uh, Hawaiian shirts and why are they throwing buckets of water at me? So I sent them a, uh, a YouTube video with a, a link to a, you know, a bit about Songkran, people you know, splashing water uh, the traditional way and also with the, the guns and stuff. And I'm thinking, I think it's probably better they watch that so they can figure out whether they think they want to walk outside or if they do um, I offered to go and buy their son a, a little water pistol from the, the town if he wants to go and have fun with the other kids in the area anyway we'll see what <laughs> happened but I've got a funny feeling they're going to get a bit of a surprise today okay just scrolling down a bit further and um, I am going to disappear in about five minutes today because I have to be somewhere at 10 o'clock this morning uh, Stephen HHH Patia from Canada says totally agree with you Tim respect goes a long way for sure yeah look um, it, and it, I don't want to get into that you know we're a guest in Thailand stuff because uh, it, it's not so much about being a guest here it's about the fact that the way Thais like to do their business uh, culturally you will be judged by what you wear many many times a lot more than you might be in your home country so uh, yeah, if you go to the offices, uh, if you go to a police station, dress appropriately. Uh, as to a lot of young Russian women uh, wearing the skimpy clothing, it's probably also a certain subset uh, who would be happy to see them do so. But yeah, I do tend to see them wearing some fairly skimpy outfits and uh, they get a few stares from uh, the Thai ladies. Um, Okay, that was uh, Barbara Botanica. Thanks, Barbara. Hello, Tim. I saw the amount of Russians when I was there in Phuket. This is from Victor Leiteo. Thailand will regret their decision. It will become like Indians all over the world. Well, <laughs> there's just a whole lot of latent racism in that comment. Not all Russians are like one or two that you saw. Not all Indian people are like another one or two you saw there just seems to be so many people who think uh, Thailand should be for just them and people from their own culture and people from India and Russia and China shouldn't be coming here or if they do oh look at their dreadful habits they're different from my habits what a surprise so sorry Victor I, I happen to disagree with you uh, whether Thailand and Phuket are going to uh, rue the day as you suggest on uh, allowing uh, there were uh, plenty of Russian people coming to Patia and in Phuket but I think uh, Patia in particular back in the early 2010s and they were buying up plenty of property and uh, enjoying life there and moving there as expats in those days just as uh, tourists uh, but before the conflict started with Ukraine um, and there were, were a few you know, huffs and puffs in the social media there. But generally, most of those Russian people get along fine with everybody else and uh, have done so. Have to disagree with you, uh, Victor. And uh, Ernie Van Buggenhout. I look every day. You make very good. Thank you very much. 
Ernie, I appreciate your comment. Uh, Corey Jackson talking to Barbara. Barbara, anyone going to immigration should dress properly and respectfully, it matters. Yeah, if you roll up to immigration in your dirty old uh, shorts that you've been wearing for the past three weeks, bit of suntan dripping down the side of your face, uh, singlet, you're just not going to get quite the same service that everybody else is going to get. You might even sort of get jumped in the queue somehow or put at the back of the queue. Uh, really, in Thailand, what you wear does matter. Whether you're a tourist, and you'll get a certain amount of uh, uh, tolerance, but generally, it does matter here. Chilled out on Lantau. Question, can you buy alcohol during Songkran? Oh yes, oh yes you can. Now, there are in some of the tourist areas, I know in Phuket, it's uh, around the, uh, oh, what's that shopping center in the middle of Phuket town? But there are some alcohol-free activities, especially for families and the kids, but there's plenty of alcohol flowing generally during Songkran. There's no blanket ban, but there are some alcohol-free uh, activities for kids in certain zones in the popular tourist areas. 782HRR, the problem Thailand is having is the same all over the Western world, real estate prices going upwards. Locals can't afford it. Well, that's a much bigger question that I don't really have time to get into today, but uh, I think you might be right. Another sip of my coffee, and we'll do uh, two more. Uh, comments, Phil L says in the USA, there are thousands of people coming across the border illegally. Uh, they are welcomed and given food, shelter and services. At least the Russians are bringing money to Thailand. Well, the situation in the US is something I can't comment on because I don't really know enough about it. Having said that, I do recognize that there is something um, in the constitution about, I, look, I can't quote it, but I've heard it many times. And I think that it might be written on the Statue of Liberty or something, I, I can't remember. But immigration made the United States. Think about it. So you may not like the current influx of uh, immigrants from one particular country or another, but the people that founded uh, the United States of America were immigrants. So, uh, and Australia, the same situation has been built on the back of strong immigration. So, uh, yeah, I think people in the UK, this is a current debate, and there are people who are sort of on one side of politics who say they don't want any immigration, despite the fact that some of them, uh, maybe two or three generations ago, may have been born from immigrant families themselves. But I appreciate your comment, and I, I don't really have a strong comment to make about that because uh, I don't really know enough about it. Had another super chat, I don't want to miss the super chats, from Valdez. Thank you very much, Valdez, appreciate your support. Um, I'll, I'll put this in, in the coffee as well. Thank you, great to have your super chat. And uh, let's, two more, here we go. One of the best supervisors I've ever had, this is from Thug Life, was an Anglo-Indian guy and he was well-educated, intelligent, loved by all, so I'm not sure what the issue with Indians is. I love Indian food, can't deny it. In fact, I had some Indian food yesterday at the Aquella Golf Course, a little bit spicy, so it got uh, taken home to have with a bit of rice at uh, a, a slower pace. Ken RQ says, I'm a Kiwi, as far as I can remember, POM or POMI means prisoner of Mother England, aka they are still stuck there living and have not escaped to a better place. Yes, I mean, uh, there's plenty of <coughs> banter in Australia between uh, Australians and Kiwis, Australians and uh, Poms as we might have called them. It's generally affectionate banter, not intended as, uh, as racism. racism. Alpha Bravo says, we miss Captain. I thought we might have seen a Captain uh, with his goggles, his Songkran shirt, his uh, water pistol all ready to go. He might just be uh, sleeping in a bit today, ready for uh, an assault later in the day. 
Oh, Tim, you really shouldn't have even tried to bring up American immigration. I didn't bring it up, uh, Bill G. But uh, yeah, I just responded to it. And as I said, I'm not really going to say much more than just a general comment about the countries in the world, many of them Western countries, who have thrived through uh, immigrants and immigration in their countries. And uh, I, I think the thing is that people were saying the same things back in the 60s in Australia. Oh, immigrants, no, it's all... And then 20 years later, they're in Parliament, they're uh, elected the Lord Mayor of Melbourne. Um, <clears throat> the immigrants providing a great de deal of cultural diversity and uh, some damn fine restaurants as well. Uh, no calls today from Lazada. No, Alpha Bravo, we've uh, haven't... I had a Lazada delivery yesterday. I bought a, a tent. There's these tents you see all the time, street stalls setting up um, uh, like a little street stall and they're three by three meters and they sort of go and there they are, come out of the back of their car and uh, turn up into a, uh, a tent. I bought one for one of my cars because the carport doesn't really fit the two cars. So uh, yeah, I bought one of these for uh, one of my cars and I can pack it up and put it in the back of the car if, if I ever want to go somewhere and want a bit of shade. 1,100 baht? I'll tell you how good it is after I get it out of the box, which will be today at some stage. <clears throat> but thank you for your time today. Thanks for all those comments. And uh, hopefully we sort of thrashed out this sort of uh, Russian invasion issue. Again, I, I think it's a bit of a dramatic word. <clears throat> But there has been an influx of both Russian tourists and expats, and the long-term effects on Phuket are yet to be seen. So far, it's just done a lot to really push up the property prices and pushed out a lot of people into other areas on the island or off the island uh, completely. I don't know what would have happened to my rent. It probably would have gone up a lot since I was there. Anyway, I'm up here in Panga and happy to be here. Have a fantastic uh, Saturday. Have a fantastic Songkran if you're in Thailand. Play safe. I recommend you wear some goggles and a hat. Uh, otherwise, we'll look forward to seeing you for Grumpy Old Men tomorrow with Steve and back on Monday with our usual uh, daily program. See you later.